my homework, that I'll probably be pretty prepared for my quiz. Well, hopefully. So again, the main thing, guys, is understanding the degrees. That's the highest power. So make sure whenever you have your polynomial, they're always in descending order, meaning in standard form. Highest power first, going down ascending order. We have that in this case. We notice that the degree in the denominator is larger than the degree in the numerator. So based on the horizontal asymptote test, y is equal to 0. That's it. Done. Boom. Sweet. Got that one. One point. The next one, vertical asymptote. Well, we learned in chapter 1 the vertical asymptote is when the denominator is equal to 0. Right? So we're going to set the denominator equal to 0. Now, however, that wasn't all the case. Right? Because what else could actually happen? We could have values that are in the, that we could have values that make the value, our function 0, but are not vertical asymptotes because they are <coughs> holes, right? But remember, holes get divided out. So it is helpful to always try to see if you can simplify this by factoring to identify any holes. However, can I factor this across rational numbers? No. And this, I can factor out the x, but it's not going to divide out with anything, OK? So now let's get to this point. So we go ahead and solve. I'm going to factor this. OK, now I can use my zero product property, x equals 0. What happens when I solve here? Subtract the 1 and take the square root. What do I get? i. Have you guys seen, have you guys seen any uh, vertical asymptotes at i? No, because that's real. Like you can't graph that on the real on a coordinate grid, right? We're not graph like we're when we're looking for the vertical asymptote asymptotes, guys. We're looking for the real values. We're not looking. We're not concerned about complex numbers here. Okay. So what that means is there's only one real vertical asymptote, and that is at x equals zero. So even though this is a solution, like we found in last chapter. It's not a solution that we're concerned with, because we're trying to find where does a physical vertical asymptote exist. right? This is not something that we can graph on our real number axis. Got it? So we just kind of disregard those solutions, because they're imaginary, complex. Make sense? We're staying in the real number system. x-intercept. Cool. I have a rational function. Replace y in this case. It's f of x. Replace it with 0. And again, remember what happens when you have a rational expression equal to 0? To find the x-intercepts, you can just, just set the numerator equal to 0, right? So I'm going to save some time. x squared minus 5 is equal to 0. x squared is equal to 5. Oh, crap. I can't take the square root of 5. Should I stop then? No, we can still take the square root of it. But I don't have a calculator. That's fine. Just leave it as a square root of 5. Or I should add. The plus or minus, right? When you introduce the square root, it's plus or minus. We and that's going to be very important when we look at this graph. The y-intercept, constant over constant. I don't have a constant here. So could I put like a 0 there if I wanted to? Yes, I mean, that's not changing the problem, right? Just adding a 0. So it's really negative 5 over 0. Uh-oh. That doesn't work, does it? So guess what? There is no y-intercept. Don't believe me? Let's look at the graph. Yes, question. How do we know like, that constant over constant is the y-intercept? Is that just what it is for all? Yeah, because watch what happens when I plug in y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. That goes to 0. That goes to 0. That goes to 0. 5 over 0, right? I mean, you can plug it in. I'm not saying don't plug it. I'm just saying I already showed you how I plugged it in.